In the last video, I promised you to show you how you can make this laser pointer so that when I right click objects, even in distance, I can actually damage the world. And if I go too far, it says the target is too far. So in this video, we're going to be actually implementing this stuff. Please make sure to have seen the previous video, because if you didn't, you will not be able to get the laser pointer because we actually created this as a custom item using a custom crafting recipe. So let's jump right into this one and let's add the laser pointer feature into it. Okay, guys, so I have created a basic skeleton behind the scenes. I do highly recommend you also check the video we have on this very tutorial about custom items, crafting recipes, as I said earlier, that is the very last video before this one, and also a video about timed tasks, because I'm going to show you what these runables are in those videos. I'm not going to teach you this on the screen in this video. So I'm just going to assume that you have all the knowledge. And if you don't understand Java, if you don't know what import and package and basically all of this code does, I highly, highly suggest you learn Java first. We have an amazing class for you. It's called Project Orient. And not only this teaches you Java, but it actually connects it with Bucket, Spigot and Paper plugins. There is myself personally twice per week live. You can unmute and share your screen so I can answer your questions and I can review your plugins code right on a screen right away. Plus there's seven weeks of content. Plus there is one month, 30 day back money guarantee. So if you don't like the class, no big deal. You can just stick with the free stuff. I do recommend you check it out. The link is in the description and that's it. So when it comes to actual laser pointer, I've created two classes. The first one is called laser pointer task, very basic runable. So it implements runable. And then I turned this class into a singleton. That means it has a static field instance. It has a private constructor, and then it has a static getter to get the instance. Now make sure to go and to also duplicate the task two and task into task three. And then you can also duplicate this code that we have made in the previous videos. If you don't have that, don't worry, just pause the video and just implement what I'm highlighting for you on the screen. So if the task exists and if it's not canceled, then make sure to cancel it because you don't want to be running the task multiple times after a plugin has reloaded. And then of course, make sure that the task three is assigned to a new task, just like that one. So it opens up the scheduler of the server and it runs a timer uh, using that instance. And the delay is zero. The period is one. That means it will edit the position of these pointers of the laser particles every uh, one one twentieth of a second, because 20 equals to one second and one means 20 times per second. Good. So that's that. That's this one. And then this is the main logic method. So this is what will spin like crazy 20 times per second, I simply define the maximum length of the sort of the laser beam, and then the particle distance inside the laser beam, I want this to be 0.5 so that you can see uh, these particles to be distant to be close to each other. And then I simply created a loop. So for each player that has a given ha a hand item in the hand item is what we have created in the last video inside crafting recipes. Again, please make sure to have checked that video because I'm not going to cover this one in this video. This is what you already should have. If you don't have that, pause it, maybe just implement it, but I don't recommend just copy pasting it. If you don't understand it, make sure you do yourself the favor and you actually check the last video. Thank you. So if you have that, um, you know that we have made the laser pointer right here, right? So this is what we need to check. So that's, that's here. We're going to be implementing this in a moment. That's the first class. The other class is called the listener. That one actually listens for the interact event. I'm not interested in clicking with the uh, with the left hand, I only want to make sure that this event is fired once because Bucket fires it twice, once for the left hand, the other, the other time for the right hand, if you are on Minecraft, um, Minecraft 1.9 and plus. So if you code for 1.8, you can just delete this, otherwise we have to have it there. And we're going to get the player, we're going to get the hand, and then I simply created a distance variable to, you know, to calculate how far we want to check if there is a block that we can create the explosion on. So make sure to have that also make sure not to forget to go into your plugin manager and register events in this class. People always miss that. So make sure to do that. Good. Inside the laser pointer, we're going to check if the player's hand item has item meta. And then if the item meta, if the display name is equals to what we had right here, Okay, so the display name was chat control white laser pointer. It's it's sort of a hacky solution, but it will work just fine. However, if other plugin creates the item with the, just the same name, 
uh, it is going to collide so make sure that these names are unique. I think if you watched the video about custom items and permanent metadata, you can also get persistent data container inside the get item get item meta um, subclass of the item stack class and inside you can actually store invisible tag so you can pair it with your plugin uniquely however this one requires i think minecraft 1.14 point plus uh, so most people should have access to it anyways i cover it in the other video so in this one i'm just going to go with the very primitive solution so if the player has this item what we want to do we simply want to get the location of the player and then what i like to do I just like to add one Y because by uh, by default, this location is at the player's feet and I want to start it at the player's sort of uh, hand location. So we're going to add the height to the location. And then I simply create it in, in training loop for the particle waypoint. So we're going to be starting right in front of the player and then we're going to be slowly building the, the, the laser beam from the player depending where the, where the player is looking and if the waypoint is less than the, the maximum length we're simply going to increase it just like that and ai already thinks ahead so i'm not going to listen to it this time i'm going to get the vector and i'm going to go inside the location get the direction that means where the player is looking right and then i'm going to multiply it with the waypoint there we go and i don't know why java doesn't work oh it actually works we just need to import the vector from org that bucket that util package otherwise it's not going to work properly and this is not vection but vector sorry guys so we have that and then we need to add the vector to the location because you cannot spawn particles using vector you have to get the location and then use the vector to sort of um expand the location in the direction in which you want it to be expanded right the beam and then what we can do we can simply get the world and we can spawn particle at the given location the particle is simply going to be a redstone beam the location is whatever we just created and then the count of it is just going to be one particle however here we also need to do something called dust option because otherwise it's just not gonna work and bucket asks for a color so we can do a yellow color and we can do say 0.75 f which stands for size of the each particle in the beam so you'll see that you can obviously just experiment you can change it to two to get a gigantic laser beam if you want to go smaller you can i think in the beginning of this video the color was red and the size was one so this is going to be a little bit different than what you've seen in the intro also if the location get block get type is not air i simply want to stop this loop so that if there is for example a glass or a stone in front of you the beam is not going to go through the wall and the beam will actually stop at the first wall that you hit which is quite smart so let's just go into the game and let's see what this does okay awesome so that one works and you can see the particles maybe even you can decrease the location although i do not recommend it because mathematically this one is just going to spawn um not linearly but exponentially more particles slowing down the server and logging the client so actually i recommend the length being as little as few as possible maybe even four because as you can see it's quite it's quite long so maybe i can just set to five and we have a small bug so it actually appears as if this is going from my left hand because here the x is supposed to be zero right as i explained so this is supposed to be one here maybe you can experiment it maybe 0 0.5 or maybe minus 0 0.5 so it appears as it goes from the right hand instead i leave that up to you okay so that's one thing now how do i actually make this work if i right click nothing happens obviously so the way you make it work is you create a new event handler as i explained this one previously and then we can actually go inside the task and just copy this okay i don't i'm not a big fan of copying things twice so maybe guys you can create like a another class in which you you do the checking mechanism if the item is the specific laser pointer but for this demo i'm just going to go with copying but generally speaking this is not the best coding practice so just take a note on this and if, if you have to copy the same code multiple times don't just create a method they'll check it for you so we can do that and obviously now it means that the player has the given laser pointer and now we can go and we can actually call ray trace blocks in the distance and this is going to produce something called ray trace result 
just like that. This is a new method. I think it's requiring 1.16 or even 17. So if you're running an older version, I think you would have to go with get target block. Yeah, so you can experiment with one of these depending on the Minecraft that you're using. You should have something available there. But the ray tracing is the most performant and the most recommended one, especially if you just don't care about 1.8.8 anymore. So I'm just going to be using that. And then if the result is not null, and also the result get hit block exist, and the result uh, has a hit block which is a solid block, right? Then what do we want to do? We just simply want to create an explosion using the create explosion me method in the player's world. Now, make sure to call it result get hit block get explosion, not player's explosion. Otherwise, you will just blow yourself. You need to blow the hit block instead. And the power can be what, what have you. It can be five, for example. I think TNT is 2.5. So if I do five, it's pretty strong. And then set fire. You know, maybe you can do through true or false, doesn't matter, whatever you wish. And then, of course, if the this operation failed, we can just send a message to the player. And there we go. And now it says target is too far and not a solid block. There we go. There we go. There we go. Let me go into the game and let me see what this will do. All right, guys, now we have these trees back because my map did not get saved. So if I right click these trees, there we go. An explosion is made. Obviously, you can create more particle effects at the explosions location. You can add sounds. But most importantly, what I do recommend is you check if the player has a certain permission, right? Maybe even, yeah, you can increase the distance. You can see how smart the AI is. But that's not what I want because probably you do not want, you know, everybody to be able to operate such a uh, powerful tool. So the, I leave that up to you. Permissions system we covered at another video. And I hope that you've learned something. Again, if you want to learn way, way more, not only subscribe to this channel, but try Project Orient class, full seven weeks of just Java and Minecraft stuff. Mini games, laser pointers, just 10 times more because I can spend a lot more time with you guys. Plus we have anti-cheats. Plus I'm going to teach you how to sell these plugins at premium, how to get premium clients and stuff like that. Plus I'm going to teach you how to create just basically anything that you ju jump on any server and you understand what they do. And then you can just replicate it without hiring expensive de developers or without spending months and months on trying to learn the code. And it's really, it's just being a hit and miss. So Project Orient really re removes all of these problems, it's going to give you everything you need in a step-by-step, -step, very easy, accessible format to teach you guys how to make amazing Minecraft plugins. Having said that, I'm saying goodbye to you once again, and I wish to see you again in the next video. Thank you.